When Gears of War 2 was first announced nearly a year ago, Cliffy B made the bold statement that it would be bigger, better, and more badass than Gears 1. It was quite a daring claim at the time, given how beloved the first Gears is. But don't worry about being disappointed, Gears fans. Cliff was right on the money. The thing you'll immediately notice about the campaign is that the scope is far more epic. There is a sense of scale that draws you into each conflict, whereas there was only one Brumac who made a guest appearance in Gears 1, there are now multiple Brumacs to take down one at a time, and those situations pop up early and often. You really get a sense that what you're doing is important and part of a much bigger struggle. The first game was partly criticized because you didn't know the motivations of the Locusts or where they came from, and that is at the very least touched on in the sequel. The story itself is also much more involved. There was more of a sense of who the Cogs are and special focus was wisely placed on Dom's search for his wife, Maria. Make no mistake, you do still play as Marcus Phoenix for the entire game, however, since he's not exactly a Shakespearean type character that you can empathize with, making Dom and Maria the driving force adds a needed human touch. And although the dialogue has been improved, it's still a little cheesy in a typical Gears kind of way. Nobody plays this game like me! Nobody! Gameplay wise, it's as solid as ever. There's nothing radically different about the core cover system, but there have been a number of tweaks and refinements. Diving into cover just feels better now, and turns and rolls can be interrupted in the middle of doing it. There's also a number of more strategic things such as portable shields, crawling to cover, proximity grenades, and using poor saps as meat shields. These changes and additions all work well. It's nothing earth shattering, but they do add another layer of depth and strategy. The levels are also much more varied this time around. Not only do they physically look different, but there is also a smattering of vehicular levels and engaging boss fights to break it all up. Everything looks gorgeous, just as expected. Models have been relit, the water looks cool, and there's more destruction in the environment. It's a little disappointing that more wasn't done with the destructible cover. It's in there, but it's not used as a gameplay mechanic and is instead more of a graphical dressing, but that's a small gripe. As with most Unreal Engine games, there is still a lot of texture fading, but that's probably the worst of the technical issues. There were only a few instances of slowdown for me, and given the incredible overall quality, that's really saying something. Thankfully, the AI is solid all around. Friendlies actually do push forward and don't just stand around like idiots. The way both NPCs and enemies react to cover is also very good, but sometimes they won't be covered when they think they are. If you do need a more human expertise, the two-player co-op is still a great way to play through the game. In terms of multiplayer, this is a game that's going to be played on Xbox Live for quite some time. I've already talked extensively about multi on the site, and it should be emphasized how good the additions truly are. Guardian Mode is a great, tense new version of Assassination. Wingman does a wonderful job of emphasizing teamwork, and Submission is an awesome new spin on Capture the Flag. All the modes can be played on all 15 maps, and there are five redone maps from the first game to go along with the cool addition of bots. The bot AI is as good as it is in single player, but there were some odd bugs that I encountered, such as one dude flying in the air while still shooting. This is by no means a common occurrence, but should still be noted. The multiplayer map design is good, if not a little too standard. Environmental hazards do liven them up a bit, as do the increased number of players on each map, so things are just a little more intense in Gears 2. Finally, we have Horde Mode, and it is awesome. Up to five guys can face a possible 50 waves of locusts that get harder every 10 waves. It's fun, it's frantic, and it's challenging. I do have an issue in that the enemy types follow the same pattern every 10 waves. I feel like it could have been mixed up just a little bit more. But overall, it's a great mode that requires a lot of teamwork. Gears of War 2 is not just Gears of War 1.5. The scope of the game has been expanded, and everything from the amazing music, refined gameplay, and deeper story make for a game that must be experienced. This is the Gears that you've been waiting the past two years for, and as Cliff so eloquently put it, it's simply badass. For the full written review, head to IGN.com. Oh, no.